Taking a deeper dive into GTA 6, we find out new info around the highly anticipated Trailer 2, highly probable predictions, and the projected timelines associated with this game. Post the unveiling of Trailer 1 on December 5th, 2023, providing enthusiasts with a tantalizing glimpse into the world of the forthcoming GTA installment. Rockstar has maintained a notable silence. Despite the absence of official announcements, the internet has been abuzz with articles and claims, including a recent piece highlighting details allegedly leaked by a Twitter user. It's prudent to approach such assertions with a discerning eye, given the prevalence of misinformation in the digital space, especially with the emergence of numerous GTA 6-themed accounts. Interestingly, amidst the sea of speculations, it's essential to acknowledge the presence of individuals who accurately leaked details about the first trailer on Reddit before its official release. One mysterious figure stands out, predicting not only the featured song, but also pinpointing the release date, directing curious minds to their username as a form of verification. This individual, while refraining from sharing disruptive insights into the game's development, did provide a tantalizing glimpse into new features. Among the disclosed features are the intriguing prospect of dual-wielding weapons, confirmed instances of gore and dismemberment, and the promise of varied sunset colors. A unique addition to the GTA universe includes a Miami-themed 3v3 basketball element, with a connection drawn to a hypothetical collaboration between Rockstar and LeBron James. The figure behind these leaks, having created their account on November 19th, 2023, mysteriously vanished shortly after sharing these details, leaving behind a trail of speculative wonder. As we navigate through these uncharted waters of gaming anticipation, the veil of mystery surrounding GTA 6 continues to captivate and enthrall gaming enthusiasts worldwide. Diving deeper into the intricacies surrounding the leaked gameplay footage, it's important to clarify that what we witnessed is not a true representation of the final product. The showcased gameplay is derived from an older build, and the developers have assured the gaming community that the game will undergo significant visual enhancements. This preliminary look is merely a glimpse, offering little resemblance to the expansive and refined map that will unfold when the game is officially released. In evaluating the validity of information, it's pertinent to underscore that Jamie King's perspectives on GTA 6 hold little value, and the credibility of the Reddit leak stands stronger. As is customary in the gaming landscape, a level of skepticism is warranted, particularly given the prevalence of misinformation circulating through various GTA 6-related accounts. Now, turning our focus to the anticipation surrounding the release of the second trailer for GTA 6, historical trends provide valuable insights. Examining the timelines of previous releases, such as GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, reveals a consistent pattern. The second trailer typically arrives approximately a year after the debut of the first one. This established rhythm aligns with expectations for GTA 6. Considering the guidance from Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, which envisions the game's release in fiscal year 2025, ending on March 31st, the stage is set for an eagerly awaited gaming experience. The projected revenue of $8 billion underscores the ambitious plans to deliver groundbreaking titles, with GTA 6 at the forefront. The confirmation of the 2025 release through the first official trailer adds another layer of certainty to the equation. With the prospective release of GTA 6 in the first quarter of 2025, the logical assumption is that the second trailer will make its debut sometime in 2024. Speculations within the gaming community have surfaced, with one user dissecting the first trailer and estimating an August or October release for Trailer 2, followed by a potential final trailer in January. The sentiment resonates with the idea of maintaining momentum and sustaining excitement among fans. An intriguing twist enters the narrative with the potential release of the PS5 Pro in November, suggesting a strategic move to reduce the waiting time for additional information. As the community engages in this dynamic dance of anticipation, excitement mounts for the next trailer, where glimpses of actual gameplay are eagerly awaited. Venturing deeper into the realm of anticipation surrounding GTA 6, comparisons with Red Dead Redemption 2, which boasted six trailers, underscore the immense budget and expansive scope that the upcoming installment is set to showcase. Expectations are set for a dynamic marketing approach with two trailers, each dedicated to unraveling the story of a protagonist. This anticipation is further fueled by the likelihood of a dedicated gameplay trailer, shedding light on the mechanics and features, as well as a comprehensive trailer providing insights into the vastness of the game's map. 
Additionally, there's a tantalizing prospect of a trailer focusing on the diverse groups and gangs that inhabit distinct zones within the game. This comprehensive promotional strategy is indicative of a monumental project that promises to redefine the gaming landscape. Now, let's unravel the rationale behind the assertion that GTA 6 is poised for a late 2025 release. Examining the historical trajectory of game releases, particularly the two-year gap between the initial trailer and the game hitting the shelves, aligns seamlessly with fiscal reports. This alignment serves as a solid foundation for confidence in predicting the game's availability by the end of 2025. Pondering the intriguing possibility that GTA 6's launch timeline might mirror that of its predecessor, GTA 5, sparks curiosity. Noting the first teaser trailer's debut on November 2nd, 2011, and comparing it with GTA 5's unveiling on December 5th, 2023, there's a parallelism that invites speculation. Expanding this analogy to include the release of the first two screenshots for GTA 5 on July 12th, 2012, suggests a timeline for potential content drops for GTA 6. If we entertain the notion of a one-year gap between the first and second trailers, mirroring historical patterns, and factor in Rockstar's potential aim for a fall release, an intricate timeline unfolds. Of course, acknowledging the industry's unpredictability, potential delays could sway this projection. Encouraging the community to share their insights, the script opens a channel for predictions regarding the release of GTA 6 Trailer 2. For those intrigued by a personal timeline, a meticulous projection is presented. The anticipation of Trailer 2 making its debut around April or May 2024, strategically ahead of the summer, is poised to keep the gaming community buzzing. Subsequent to this, the prediction of a third trailer, potentially a gameplay trailer, surfacing around October or November of the same year, with the possibility of extending into December, adds to the excitement. Early 2025 is earmarked for another critical trailer, presumably a launch trailer, complemented by TV spots to amplify the buzz. During the interim periods, additional content drops are anticipated, featuring new screenshots, short-form videos, and artworks, ensuring a sustained engagement with the gaming audience. Acknowledging the evolving landscape of marketing, the script posits that character trailers, a hallmark of GTA 5's promotional strategy, may not be a focal point this time. The shift from three protagonists in GTA 5 to two in the current installment lends credence to this assertion. The first trailer introduced Lucia, and the prediction is that the second trailer will shift the spotlight to Jason, offering glimpses into his character and potentially unveiling more facets of the game's map, including Sport Gilhorn. Furthermore, a dedicated story trailer is envisioned, delving deeper into the narrative, characters, and plot. If Rockstar aims to sustain the momentum generated by the first trailer and is eyeing an early 2025 release, the likelihood of witnessing the second trailer before the summer of the current year becomes plausible. There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've got to warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit from certain glimpses in the trailers and Rockstar's promotional stuff that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, because we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. 
I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here. The cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80 on the GTA 6 subreddit solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. 
Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. So, please share your thoughts in the comments section below, and let's keep this discussion rolling. We're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portalhorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Portgorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer, signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar Games title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. 
These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the mapping project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway. Specifically, the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 197. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 197 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotch Grab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This, to me, indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 404 2 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. 
As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the loop highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possessed distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a loop highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. One, 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. One, 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. There's substantial evidence hinting at a larger map size, but I'm eager to hear your input, so don't hesitate to leave a comment below.